Welcome to the In Story Show, how empaths do it, how to turn your sensitivities into your strengths. And today I am thrilled to welcome Lydia Sophia Vimson. Hi, Lydia. Hi there. Thank you very much for the invitation, dear Devorah. It is my pleasure. And before we dive in, I'm just going to read a little bit about you. So Lydia Sophia Vimsen is an independent spiritual and down-to-earth businesswoman. She is a business mindset coach who lives life on her terms, helping entrepreneurs and change makers succeed in life and business. She works with sensitive and intuitive entrepreneurs and supports them, their businesses, and their work so they can fulfill their mission, the mission their soul is here for, which I completely love this whole topic <laughs> and what you do in the world. So, um, so before we go into what you do in the world, I love for everybody to start a little bit with their story, especially since we're focusing on empaths and highly sensitive people and how to, how did you come to know that about yourself? And did you go through, you know, a time in your childhood where you didn't know that about yourself or you couldn't be yourself in some way? So I'd love if you could share a little bit about where you grew up and what your life was like. Um, and then eventually we'll lead into how you turned this into your great strengths as what you do in the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course. Let's start there. So I'm one of the persons who didn't know that I was an empath nor HSP, highly sensitive person. I actually only found out when I was in my late twenties, when I found a really nice book, a German one about, um, yeah, high sensitivity basically. And when I then look back, obviously I always like, I was that kind of person, but I didn't know. And um, for me, it was really interesting that, yeah, people did ask me like, why are you that way? And what's wrong with you? Because I was very, very like, not kind of shy person, but very much for myself when I was younger and always the people wanted me to talk more and be like more, entertaining or something and it just it just didn't fit with me I was like I just want to be with myself and also when I was older I never saw myself as a very extroverted person nor as a very introverted person so I needed so much time for myself it was like what's wrong with me because I don't feel like a typical introvert and later on I found out you know the one of the traits of high sensitivity is that you need a lot of time to process all the many things you feel the emotions from the people like everything and this is why I needed so much time so for me it was very helpful later on to really understand what was going on and that I'm actually okay and another thing is that people always told me like don't think so much like be more emotional and I was deeply emotional inside and I was just, you know, observing and taking in all the emotions of other people and observing what are they doing and HSPs or um, empaths, you know, because we feel so much, we do have to process more. That makes us good thinkers. Like we have to think more in a like shorter amount of time. And this is why people thought I was just thinking and not emotional. And I felt so misunderstood because I was very emotional, you know. And now I can own it. Now I can say, yes, it's one of my gifts to be a fast and quick thinker and be deeply emotional. And this is one of my traits. However, obviously, in the beginning, it was this feeling of being totally misunderstood and also not being able to understand myself. Like, what is going on? Like, it's such a difference what other people tell you, how they see you, how you feel. Yeah, so it was definitely many years of, of that kind of feeling. <laughs> And I, and I ask everybody this because it's so common because yes. it wasn't known or talked about. So what did you do as your work in the world or what did you do before you knew this? Like what was, tell me a little bit more about what you did in the world and how did you, how was it a problem and how did you manage, you know, sort of before you read that book and then what happened after that? Mm -hmm. I would say I was always good with coping somehow because you know a little bit of my life story. I grew up basically in cult cult settings. So I was very good already in just... Say a little bit more. You didn't tell the audience yeah. that you grew up in Germany. Say a little bit more about where you grew up and what that mm -hmm. was like. So yeah. they have a little bit more of a picture. Yeah. So it was a setting. It was kind of a Catholic um, community. However, a very strict regime, how you had to live, what you had to think. It wasn't in written legal code or something. It was all those, 
like unwritten um, ways of how to how to behave and i would say it was like a sect so if you did wrong then there was punishment in like what you were like what you were allowed to do then and i had to move all the time because you know depending on the people what they said like the cult leaders where you should be you had to be and just go to this different place and live there you um, people had to marry the person they were told to marry we had like one big leader who made the rules and the people then who acted out those rules and put like the weakest people were always those who were punished basically so it was a very insecure place to grow up you know and not with your own personality it was very much the personality you should have mm -hmm. so in that way i knew how to behave in order to stay hidden you know to not be called out to not be punished basically so this helped me obviously later on to always fit in because i could mm -hmm like a chameleon you know i could just be whatever people expected me to be mm -hmm. so this is probably how i just managed to go on without feeling like seen by the other people however it helped me you know until i understood what was going on how i was different um yeah to get along and um i would say it was also this way of just being reclusive, of just taking myself a little bit out and not telling everyone. And this, I wouldn't say do that in order to be okay with your, tra your trade, you know, but this was my way. I just didn't show my real me because in the beginning, I didn't know my real me. I didn't know my personality. Mm -hmm. So it was easier to just behave as any, like anyone wanted. And um, later on, I could also use that. Obviously, it's a kind of strength as well. Well, and I mean, I think this is very, very common for a lot of empaths, highly sensitive, because you're, you're empathic, you're highly sensitive, you know what's going on. Yes. But, and so you became hyper aware of how to not get in trouble, basically, right? Mm -hmm. so, uh, so I think a lot of us, we grew up learning to please the situation around us to, like you said, like to adapt. And then you, then I don't know when you had this shift, because I think what happens is, when you're you so you maybe talk a little bit about how you left that world and started to get yourself back because i think part of what happens is in some ways you don't have a self right yeah it's yours right you've made yeah. your self be whatever everybody else wants you to be so i would love to hear a little bit about how you began to move out of that yeah yeah, it's super interesting also what you just said um, to please everyone. And this is basically a trait or what many of us do, many empaths, many highly sensitive people. Um, it's a skill we learned. And um, I probably did it because of the cult setting in an even more crazy way, like in an even more extreme way. And so it's really interesting how I got out of that. So how I... Um, how I left the cult, this was when I became, when I um, got 18. So I like basically with a lot of um, friends then, like when I went to school, I had amazing support. I had friends outside of the community. And then I found out like, I don't want to live like that. You know, I have, the good thing for me then was I was never very much indoctrined or like, um, I didn't believe in the ideology. So I wasn't, you know, a big believer. And this is actually a problem for other people, you know, when they want to get out of a like cult or whatever, because they feel like God is punished, is going to punish them or the devil is going to come, whatever. This wasn't my problem so much. And for me, a big help was to get surrounded, to surround myself by like-minded people, mm -hmm. by friends, to really build friendships and like deep friendships, not the superficial ones, but friends I can trust with my life to actually just because I never had this in my teens, you know, because we moved all the time. So I didn't have friends from then and I built them when I was 18. And I started, and I can't really tell you how this started, but I start to read a little bit about spirituality, but more the very open ways, a little bit of meditation and personal development. I really started this in my twenties early on. So it was then a process. It was not like do one thing and this changes your whole life. It was a process of many, many years for me. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And to find my, and it was the personal development and my, obviously my coaching degrees, um, a degree, it took me three years and then many other things of group therapy. I also did a lot of group therapy and stuff like that or personal therapy. So 
I invested a lot in myself and it wasn't, you know, just one thought and this changed everything. It was a process and I invested a lot to, to grow my own personality. Like people who know me or who have known me when I was 15 or 18 or 20 and who see me now, like for them, I'm a different person. They wouldn't like basically recognize me in a good way, obviously. <laughs> What's different? What would you say is different? Oh, probably everything. Um, it is very much the belief in myself, the personality that I know who I am, like what are my values? What are my core beliefs? What is like my mission here on the planet? Um, yeah, my self-belief, how I talk now. I still am not the person like the big entertainer in a group, you know, I'm still not the clown or whatever, How? but I am able to mix with a group and speak with the right people and be there myself and actually voice my opinion. And I wouldn't have not, not at all been able to, to done that. Like, um, yeah, in, in those days. So it's more the, how do you say that? Not the, the factual things. It's more the, the soft skills, which mm -hmm. have changed totally. I love that so much because I think what happens is, you did all this work to do what this whole summit is about, which is to turn your sensitivities into your strengths. And so mm -hmm. now we can, let's talk a little bit about that. Like, so how do you, what are some of the things you do to help others to use these gifts as your strengths? Um, you know, cause first it's, I think first it's like, Oh my gosh, this is who I am. Now what the heck do I do? Because there's all this wounding and trauma and all these painful things. So then, and then you get past that and then it's like, I have something to say, mm -hmm. you know? And that I think is, that's a big part of my passion also is that I really believe we have something to say and that as empaths, highly sensitive, creatives that you know intuitives we really are needed like what we the way we see the world and what we have to say now i think we're being really called forward to make a difference so so i think it's super exciting and uh, so now i'd love to hear a little bit about what are some of the ways that you are now using these sensitivities to help yourself to help others to make a difference Mm -hmm. Yeah, great question. <laughs> and the funny thing is when I started um, as a mentor and as a coach for sensitive and intuitive people um, and empaths, obviously, I didn't know I was targeting those people. Like I didn't know I was targeting, targeting us. And then I just later on, a friend of mine said, ah, but you said you are highly sensitive. And why wouldn't you just work with those people? And then I thought like, okay, interesting niche. And then I found out I was already working with those people, you know, I went through every client of mine and all of them fit the description to the book, basically. <laughs> and then you know, it was I like, okay. I basically have that same experience. I didn't know that that's who I was working with until I started to talk about it and everybody went, well, yeah. <laughs> so then I decided to do a whole series on it. So I think we just didn't, we didn't know. Yes. <laughs> So and then, yeah, and then it was, yeah, that's really funny. And then it was really like, okay, interesting. And it's probably, or um, what we work on, obviously, is to, yeah, on self-belief, because many of sensitive people, because they are so sensitive and because they feel so much, the empaths of other people, that they sometimes really can't decide or understand, are those my feelings or are those the feelings of others? Like, what is it? Um, that we obviously work on that, like on their own self-belief, on their own like confidence. It is often very much like less developed and, and sensitive, you know, because we don't know how to navigate with that. So this is a big, big step we work together on. And um, then it is about understanding, yeah, like obviously how to cope with some of the situations for sensitives, for example, just with noise and light and overwhelm in general, like you obviously have to learn some, like to cope with that. It's not, you know it and then it's gone, you know, it's, mm -hmm. you still have to find ways how to deal with that. Also for entrepreneurs, you know, how do you work? Which hours, how many hours, what kind of breaks do you do? And also because there are like many strategy people out there, many strategy coaches who tell you this is the one way and follow it. And for intuitives, it won't work. 
you know, I did those strategy coachings and I tried it my way and uh, not my way. I tried it that way. It didn't work, you know, because we, we are different and not, I don't want to say we are better or something. However, you know, the one strategy, it doesn't fit. It doesn't work. So this is also very important also in the work or with generally like with empaths and sensitive people, intuitive people to really find their own unique way and trust in that. And it might be different to everything else they know. So even there, you need more self-belief and more confidence to say, yes, I'm going the, the path less traveled, basically. I'm not following the masses, masses. I'm doing my own way. So this is a big part of the work, you know, to, because then everything is easy. Once you have that, once you follow your intuition, once you can understand your intuition and so on, then it's, you know, everything... The rest is peanuts, basically, you know, it's not, but you know what I mean, you know, and this is the big work which needs to happen first. I'm so with you. I love it. In fact, <laughs> we discover these things later, like I call my whole program the in-story way. And eventually I said, oh, right, there is no in-story way. The in-story way is finally doing it your way. So, so I, I really love that. And what I would love for you to say a little bit more about is how do you, what are some things you do? To help people do to begin to have develop that self-belief like to um to begin that process of discernment like now you've told us like what we need to do so now i want to hear a little bit about some of the ways you help in how to do it mm -hmm. yeah good question and also there i have to say i don't have the one strategy for everyone so obviously it is I very <laughs> <laughs> that's the whole point uh, you just made which i'm with you <laughs> <laughs> here's some things to try. I think that's part of it. Like here are some things that have worked for me or for someone else. Mm -hmm. and you have to try it, which is yeah. what you're saying, right? That yeah. 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 So it is very different from person to person. Mm -hmm. Generally speaking, it starts not so much with what they do. It starts with me that I, once I start working with people or also like in my friend circle, like circle of friends and everything, um, because I have, I'm highly skilled in seeing and feeling the emotions and also the fears of other people. I obviously can tell them a little bit about what I see, about what I feel. And once I have the feeling of, yes, I feel the power in them, they are ready to step into that power, into their potential. I basically start with believing in them. So they don't believe in themselves yet. And I give them that belief. Right. You know, and I full on give that to them. And this obviously is a big starting point of everything because then they have this belief, even though they don't have it themselves yet, but they get it and full on, you know, and then they can like build up on that. And then we do like different processes. I do energy work. I do like NLP timeline therapy, stuff like that. And, um, I give them a lot of journaling so they can really sit down. And this is also good because we are quick thinkers and sometimes it's good to sit down and write, you know? So we obviously use that and I can hi highly recommend that to people to have ju like uh, just a tiny little morning and evening routine. Evening routine is even more important because then you work through the night basically, you know, through the sleep. So just write for two or three minutes. It doesn't need to be half an hour or whatever. And it changes how you wake up in the morning. And obviously we do a lot about, um, or what I help them is, and this might also be um, super interesting for the audience, we shift the focus. We shift the focus really on the energy they want to feel, how they want to be. And we shift that, that they start seeing that and living that in the now. So um, it's not like we don't focus on what is not working. And obviously we do work on that. We focus on what do you want to achieve? Where do you want to be? And then you can start seeing small signs already when you just uh, like basically guide your awareness to that because you're never only unhappy throughout the day. Even though you might say, I'm super depressed. <laughs> then you're focusing on being sad all the time. And just to ask, was there just one moment throughout the day where you weren't that? And then start focusing on that. And this in the beginning, it's, tra it's like training your physical body, but your mental body or like your mind basically. So, you know, it's, it's tiny things and they sound sometimes very easy or very like, what is that? And they make all the difference. 
I completely agree with you. You know what, what I've also seen this sense of having to re-see yourself. And this is a big part Like what you're doing about saying, I see somebody and you say that back to them. I think that's what we do for each other. We stand for each other. I spend a lot of time also saying back to people what I see that they're not seeing. Like I always say, I have a line. I always say that we're a little invisible to ourselves. And, um, and the other thing that I have found is that in a, I have a group program, right? And I say to people, they'll say to me, I don't know if anyone's going to like what I write that they're going to share. I said, if it moves you, it will move others. Because we're not used to, I, just what you're saying, we're not used to trusting our intuition because intuition we got flack for it. So I think that is a big part of what, um, what's happening to us. And then what I'd like to do is talk a little bit about more about like visionary ideas. Like, where do you think this is going? Like, what are some of your bigger visions and some of the bigger visions that your clients are having? Cause I think we're seeing something bigger happening here. Yeah, most definitely. <laughs> um, I will actually even do a Ted talk, TEDx talk on that. So it's not done yet. So I can't give you the link about the importance and the leadership and the pioneer role of um, intuitives and empaths and sensitive people. Because I do think we are stepping into a new era and we don't have to go into 5D and stuff like that. You know, we don't have to call it like that. We can just say we are stepping like after the information age, we are stepping into a new era. And the sensitive people, the empaths, the intuitives, they will be the pioneers of that era because it's, we'll all, it will be so much more about intuition, about even like supernatural things sometimes. You don't have to call them like that, you know, but intuition sometimes can be like that. So just let's call it um, just intuition. And um, sensitives, like how we deal with the earth, with other people, with ourselves, and that it's going away from the collective. There is one guru, one god, one politician who is telling us the way and the masses are following. It will be more, much more about the individual leading and transforming themselves and those people around them. And intuitives, because they are so sensitive to everything what is happening. They are already picking up on that, that we are basically on the, on the edge of a new and call it what you want like a new era new time whatever and i think even um, elaine aaron said this that intuitives and sensitives are because they feel so much they are like the yeah they are the people who are walking in front you know because they can see more hear more feel more than other people so they are i don't know the english word they are the not observers something else you know the people who go in front because they are more their senses work better so I would actually really see it like that. People feel more, see more, hear more, and they will be the pioneers of the change coming. And you obviously have to step into your power to do that. If you hide behind your fears and, oh God, I'm different and people don't like me or whatever, this is not, you know, there needs, there is work to be done. And this is why I do my work because those people, I, I work like you do with the future leaders. Right. I think it's just the coolest thing ever. It's so exciting. And, you know, we, bec we become able to have new language for this. And that's, I think, what you, both of us have experienced. Like, I didn't say when I started, I didn't even say in the beginning when I came online that I was working with women. And then I realized, okay, I'm only working with women. And then I didn't realize it was really, oh, then it was creative women. And then it's like, oh, no, it's really sensitive. We're becoming able to see, like, we haven't been able to see it in a way or name it. And so I think it's so, I don't know, it's super exciting and interesting because I always have had this feeling like we have something to say and that deeper wisdom needs to be brought out in the world. And so when, when I did it first with young people and bringing spiritual language to young people, and now it's like bringing this new way of knowing and trusting and seeing and, val and, and valuing it. Um, so I, I, I agree with you. I think it's um, very confirming and validating, I think, yeah. for us. Mm -hmm. And also about the pioneer role, just something else came to me. It is about also, it is also a kind of teaching role because we have those higher or alerted senses and higher feelings. And we will be in that role because we will be able to teach others how to work with intuition and emotions. Right. So yeah, 
this is also why it's so important and why it's um, the next the next step forward. I can, I'm I so agree, you know, and uh, so all right. So tell us a little bit about how people can connect with you. What is your free gift so that you're going to, you know, help people, you know, in your world to take the next step? Because that's a big part of it is that we get that intuitive feeling of who we're connected to. And, you know, the people here are going to listen and resonate so they can take another step forward. Yeah, of course. I'd love to. So what I found out, what many entrepreneurs, sensitive entrepreneurs um, struggle with is obviously also charging their worth. They are much less in, oh, you know, I could take money for that. No, okay, I do all of that for free. And this is not working. It's working like if you're not an entrepreneur, but as an entrepreneur, you have a business. So you have to learn to charge and charge in a good way. To, and also spiritual people, like money is evil and all that stuff, you know. So there is a lot of work to be done in that area. And um, I, for example, have, I have several um, free gifts, but one I want to mention here is about um, how to stop undercharging, how to charge your worth, how to really become aligned with what you're charging and getting rid of beliefs which keep you from that and actually loving to love to charge money because you know it's actually good to charge money for that because the commitment of the people who will work with you or buy from you is so much higher than they are invested. What do you get for free? You know, all the free stuff on, on fairs, you know, you just throw it away. But something you really invest your money and your time and your energy in, yes, this is so much more worth to you. So this is a free gift I have, a little like PDF because I think it's ultra important for entrepreneurs too. And whatever level you're on, it's not only for the newbies, it's also for other people, you know. There are people out there and I think like, what are you doing? You'll be like suffering when you're 80 or 70 because there is no money left to, to um, feed yourself, you know, how you're working at the moment. So yeah, people it can obviously get this. That's a really, really important gift because it definitely, it's a paradigm shift. And part of it is knowing where are you? Because we have the model of spiritual teachers who are like sadhus and didn't charge and that, but you have to say, okay, if that's not the paradigm you're in and you switch over to this uh, um, entrepreneurial paradigm, it does require, I'm so glad you're offering this because it does require a, a particular kind of deep work to be able to feel that, I think to feel that we're still, humble and we're still in service um and and that the money is not corrupted you know we have so many yeah. i always say we don't want to be the guru gone bad right so um so i think that's a really powerful gift because here's the thing we need to build up the our you know i always say don't we want money to go into the hands of highly sensitive enlightened entrepreneurs like hello <laughs> yes, I, I coined the, well, I don't know if I coined it, but I used the word conscious billionaires. Right. Like imagine <laughs> having those kind of people on the planet doing good and bringing their gifts to the world. How amazing is that? Right, right, exactly. So, um, so, so make sure if people to get the free gift and then come in, we're having a Facebook group with the um, series, with the In Story Show series and pop in and share what your experience is. Like go through the PDF and then share what comes up for you and where you are in this whole journey. Because what you can see right away is sharing in front of each other makes a big difference. Like we, we really can't do this work alone. Like that is a big, clearly a big thing. So kind of to wrap up, Lydia, share maybe a last few words of, words of inspiration for us. <laughs> words of inspiration. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure. No. <laughs> oh, no pressure at all. Pressure <laughs> um, I would just say, I don't have like a little citation or whatever. It is more, I really want to give you like my belief in that moment. Like if you have something you want to go for, if there is just a tiny little zest for doing more in the world, perhaps starting out onto um, your entrepreneurial start, I can just say, give it a go. However, obviously get help on your side and you might just you be in the group and join the group and be in there and get help on your side. You don't have to do it alone. And I would say also I'm sensitive and I said this, it's, it saved my life to have friends around me. So mingle with 
like-minded people. It is key. And don't think you have to do it alone. Not at all. We are social beings. So get help and support on your side and yeah, walk the path and share your message because it is needed. It is so needed. I can't say it like with more pressure <laughs> in my voice. <laughs> I agree. And obviously all of you, you're here listening because you're feeling this calling of your soul. And so much of what this is about is that if you begin to tell your story, it will reveal your purpose and it will bring you those people along, you know, along your side to do this journey with you. So Lydia, thank you so much. And uh, I love, I love that you're out in the world doing what you do. Um, and everybody, as I always say in farewell, remember to go out in the world, share your story, live your purpose, and be a blessing. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you.